Hello, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Joshua Karasak. I'm a winemaking specialist with Anartis USA. And this short video is going to show you how to stabilize red wines with Zenith Color. So in this video, I'm going to talk about why we would want to consider to use Zenith Color for red wine stability, what Zenith is, how to apply Zenith Color, and a timeline for Zenith additions. So why would we want to consider using Zenith Color? So red wines, especially wines that are highly colored and have excess natural acidity, can precipitate sediment in the bottle over time. Uh, so the sediment can be a complex of color and tartrates. It can be simply unstable color. It could be tartrates. And so what we need to do as winemakers uh, to avoid this sedimentation is to stabilize that color and tartrate. Loss of color in our red wines over time is a problem because color density is associated with quality. And when we lose that color from a precipitation in the bottle, uh, one, we create a sediment that the consumer probably won't enjoy. And two, we actually lose color through that sedimentation. So uh, for wines that are highly colored that may become unstable over time during aging, uh, we want to try and predict that instability and to try and stabilize those wines. So what is Zenith? Zenith is a revolutionary line of new wine stabilizers based on the molecule potassium polyaspartate or KPA. KPA is a patented molecule for tartrate stabilization, which was created by an artist and is approved for use in wine from the TTB under the 24250. So KPA is a polyamino acid of aspartic acid. Uh, so aspartic acid is an amino acid that's naturally occurring in grapes. And so KPA is just a long chain of aspartic acid, essentially. KPA works by binding potassium and preventing potassium by tartrate formation. So it prevents tartrates from being able to form in wine. So um, we have various options in our Zenith line, depending on the kind of wine that you're making. If you're looking at making a white or rosé wine and want to stabilize tartrates, Zenith Uno uh, is a good option for you. It is a 10% solution of KPA and SO2. If you are making red wines that are highly colored and you want to stabilize those wines, uh, Zenith Color would be the option for you. Uh, so Zenith Color is a solution of 10% KPA to stabilize tartrates. Filterable Acacia Varic uh, Gum Arabic, which is um, basically for stabilizing color and um, stabilizes color that can become unstable over time. And uh, SO2. And then Zenith Perlage is spe specifically for sparkling wines. It's a solution of KPA with manoproteins. Uh, the manoproteins in that blend essentially improve um, foamability and bubbles. Uh, so that's why that is included in that uh, particular product. So, and for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to be just highlighting Zenith Color. Uh, Zenith Uno can also be used in red wines that are tartrate unstable. Uh, however, we do recommend using Zenith Color for red wines because it is going to stabilize that color over time, whereas the Zenith Uno doesn't have color stabilization impact. So now I'll talk about applying Zenith Color and the criteria that you need to meet for using Zenith Color. So first you want your wine to be protein stable. Uh, protein stability is not usually an issue in, um, in red wines uh, because of the level of uh, phenolic content and tannin. Usually those tannin and uh, phenolics bind to proteins in the fermentation and so you don't have a lot of protein content in red wines. However, some non vernifera varieties uh, might be protein rich because they don't have a lot of tannin and they have uh, are very rich in protein content. So if you're using a non vinifera you might need to check protein stability on your uh, on your red wine before you use it. Uh, also, you want to make sure you don't have any lysozyme in the red wine. So uh, if the wine has been treated with lysozyme or if you intend to use lysozyme on uh, the wine before bottling, uh, we don't recommend using uh, Zenith Color in wines that are going to be treated with lysozyme. And if you do have lysozyme or you've treated your wine with lysozyme, uh, you should definitely uh, do some finding to try and remove that lysozyme with either bentonite or some kind of uh, protein removal finding agent. Zenith Color stability trials are super easy to do, and I'll go over how to do those trials uh, with you in a couple of minutes. Uh, Zenith Color needs to be applied to clarified or filtered wines. So wines that are less than two NTU turbidity are um, how you apply Zenith. So Zenith is usually applied just before bottling after you've done most of your uh, filtration. Uh, so if you're doing pad filtration or cross flow filtration, typically you would add the Zenith color just before, bo just before bottling after you've done your filtration. 
And then we do recommend uh, good filterability on your wines, uh, less than 12 on filterability index. And I'll go over how to do filterability checks on your wine um, later on in this presentation as well. So here's sort of an ideal timeline for stabilization of red wines. Typically you would be doing all of your major adjustments to the red wine about six to eight weeks from your bottling date. So this includes blending, acid adjustments, fining, clarification, and then we recommend during this time to do glucan and pectin testing. Uh, so glucan and pectins are polysaccharides that are naturally found in grapes. Um, glucans can be elevated in grapes that have had botrytis infection. And glucans and pectins in general can create uh, filterability issues when you get to bottling time. So in order to avoid having filterability issues in your wine, we do recommend doing glucan and pectin testing early. Uh, because then you have the opportunity to apply enzymes to remove those pectin or glucans. And the glucan and pectin enzymes usually take a little bit longer in wine. So if you get to this point, uh, about six to eight weeks out, we do recommend doing some glucan or pectin testing. And most commercial labs can offer this, or you can actually go on our website and we have some methodologies for doing this uh, testing yourself. So four to six weeks out is when you might be doing tannin trials or polysaccharide trials, trying to adjust the mouthfeel or the body of the wine. Three to four weeks out is when you'll start doing Zenith testing. So Zenith testing, um, as I mentioned before, I'll go over in a couple of minutes. It's super easy to do, and it'll ensure the compatibility of your uh, product with the Zenith. You'll order your Zenith at this point. Then about one week out, you'll do filtration through your crossflow or pad filters. After you do your um, initial filtration, you would basically put your wine through some filterability testing. And that will again ensure that your wine, uh, you're not going to have any difficulty with membrane uh, filtration prior to bottling. And then finally, one to two days out, you'll make some final adjustments and make your Zenith addition uh, just before bottling. So uh, now I'll just quickly go over how to do Zenith color testing. Zenith color testing in involves uh, color stability flasks. You'll find the link for the flasks in this video description. And essentially, they are glass flasks that have graduations. Um, you use the flasks in order to measure the amount of sediment that may form uh, in the wine after the testing. So what you'll do is you'll, you'll get these flasks and then you'll filter your wine. Um, you'll parse 100 mils into each flask and depending on how many different dosages you want to test uh, will depend on how many flasks you prepare. We usually recommend a standard 200 milliliter per hectoliter dosage of Zenith Color uh, because that's what stabilizes most red wines. So for simplicity's sake, we would say uh, have an untreated flask or a flask that you're not going to make any Zenith additions to, and then one flask which will be treated with Zenith. So what you do is you filter the wine into each of the flasks. You dose one with your desired dosage of Zenith color. And then, those, uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to measure absorbance on the samples um, to see what the 420, 520, and 620 color range um, are. So you'll have your initial absorbance on the samples. Then those flasks are going to go into a refrigerator, uh, a negative four degree refrigerator for 24 hours. Um, after 24 hours, you'll take the flasks out and you'll observe for any precipitate in the flasks. And you can record the amount of precipitate if you like. Uh, generally speaking, the untreated may have precipitate from color or tartrates and the treated um, sample will have less if not any uh, sediment in it. So then you're going to measure absorbance after that to see what the color uh, difference in color is, if any, between the initial and the final absorbance after testing. And so what this testing does is it basically predicts the instability of color over time and will tell you if your wine has the potential to drop unstable color. Uh, it also tells you if the Zenith color treatment dosage that you've selected or your treatment that you're working with uh, has in fact stabilized uh, the wine. So some of the outcomes of the color stability trials, I'll just go over how to interpret the results and how to um, take action after you've done your testing. So if the untreated sample is stable, then no treatment is necessary. You don't really need to treat a sample that is going to be stable for color and tartrates. If the untreated sample is unstable, then treatment is necessary and you should look to the dosage of um, Zenith that you've, that you've tested. So if the Zenith color is stable, then you treat the wine with the Zenith color dose that you've selected. If the Zenith color treatment is unstable and is less than 200 milliliters per hectoliter, you can try doing another test with 
the maximum um, legal dosage rate, which is 200 milliliters per hectoliter. If you find that that wine is unstable, then there's some other options for you in terms of stabilizing that wine. Uh, most wines will be stable with that um, kind of dosage, but some really, really highly colored wines that are um, that have the potential to be very unstable um, may require additional uh, treatment in order to make sure that they're they're stable. So here's some additional options for very color rich reds uh, that essentially need additional uh, treatment in order to become stabilized. One approach is the additive approach. Uh, so the additive approach is that you can increase the amount of um, color stabilizing uh, gum arabic in your uh, treatment. Um, so the limiting factor in Zenith color is the dosage of KPA at 200 milliliters per hectoliter is the le uh, maximum legal dosage of Zenith color that you can apply. But you can increase the amount of gum arabic uh, which stabilizes color in that, uh, in that wine as well. So if you're finding that your, your wine is just super color unstable or that you need a lot of um, stabilization um, from the testing, then you can actually increase the amount of uh, filterable gum arabic and that will stabilize the um, stabilize the wine. So the Maxi Gum F is essentially the component of Zenith Color that is a filterable um, acacia varic gum arabic. Another approach that you can take is the subtractive approach, which is utilizing uh, Clairol ZR. So Clairol ZR is a, a new finding agent uh, from an artist specifically for red wines. Uh, it's a red wine clarifier, so it has a, a blend of calcium-based bentonite, plant protein, and chitosan. Um, and it essentially what it does is it can remove unstable colloids. So in the, in the case that you have a lot of unstable color, it can remove some of the unstable color. Uh, and it can also help clarify and settle out wines that are difficult to clarify. Um, the, the synergy between the plant protein, chitosan, and bentonite works really well for clarification and settling. So this is uh, something you can use as a subtractive approach if you're finding that your wines are just very, very color rich and very color dense and that the wine is uh, has a potential to be very unstable. This might be a way to prevent precipitation in the bottle um, by removing the unstable color ahead of time. So those are the two options for you in terms of stabilizing very color rich reds. So going back to our timeline for stabilization, uh, we've gone through our basically most of our testing for Zenith and we've ordered our Zenith color at this point. Um, one week before we bottle, we're going to be likely doing some cross -fill filtration or pad filtration, filtering the wines, getting ready for bottling. After we've done our initial filtration, we can do some filterability testing to check to see how filterable the wine is before we go to bottling. And that's going to help prevent headaches if we do have a wine that's not, um, not filterable at that point. If we've done the glucan and pectin testing ahead of time and we've you know, crossed off that the wine is either glucan negative or pectin negative, then uh, the filterability testing is probably going to show that the wine is very filterable. However, if you did not do any glucan or pectin testing um, and you have pectins or glucans, then your filterability might be um, questionable at that point. So that's what the filterability testing is for. So when we get to the filterability testing portion, we want to ensure that your wine is filterable. Um, in order to ensure that your wine is filterable, there's a couple of different ways that you can go about doing it. I recommend doing filterability tests. So filterability tests usually rely on um, measuring how much wine is filtered as a volume over time. And so there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do your own DIY kind of setup for in-house um, measurements, uh, or you can purchase a unit that actually does the filterability test automatically for you. Um, we sell the filterability units at an artist USA. So if you are interested in doing this testing in-house and you want an automatic unit to do so, you can reach out to our supplies um, department and we can give you guidance on um, getting one of those units. Alternatively, if you're a smaller operation and you're just doing this occasionally on some of your red wines, uh, then you can rely on commercial labs who offer this as a service. And so after you do your filtration, you submit the wine to the lab and ask for a filterability test and they'll give you back a filterability index usually and a modified filterability index. And so uh, we basically say that if your wine is less than 12 in the filterability index, then your wine is probably suitable for um, filtration and ready for bottling at that point and using Zenith color. Uh, 
if the filterability is index is above 12 then you may have some difficulties with that wine and filterability so uh, these are all just checks to do ahead of time to ensure that you don't have any difficulty with membrane filtration during bottling so going back to our timeline for stabilization we've gone through again all of the testing we're about one to two days out from our bottling date and so at this point is when you'd be making your Zenith edition and using Zenith is super easy. Um, essentially what you do is you're going to apply the Zenith color. Um, it's in a liquid form. It gets mixed into your tank um, either directly by adding it into the tank or you can use a Venturi or some sort of pump over mixing. Um, but basically mix it homogeneously into the tank and then 24 to 48 hours after you add it, you're ready to bottle. So we recommend adding it about 24 to 48 hours beforehand. Uh, it allows for integration of the product and makes for a smoother bottling. So that's how you apply the Zenith color. It's super easy once you get to this point. It's just add it into the tank and you're good to go. So very easy in terms of the application point, uh, portion. So thanks so much for watching this video on uh, stabilizing red wines with Zenith color. If you have any other questions or would like more information about Zenith Color, you can visit our website, which has more resources. Uh, there's technical data sheets. In the description of this video, there's another um, sheet that is a PDF on uh, applying Zenith Uno and Zenith Color. So you can refer to that sheet, which has a little bit more details on testing and application. Uh, additionally, you can just reach out to the technical line at uh, your Anardis branch, and we'll go ahead and help you with application or any questions that you may have. Um, if you would like to subscribe to our channel, we have all kinds of updates on winemaking that we're constantly making in, um, over the course of the year. And we've got a lot of resources available on the website in terms of uh, previous webinars and previous informational videos that we have on winemaking there. So there's lots of content available for you there as well. Um, if you are interested in learning more about Zenith Uno, again, you can look in the description of this video and there's a link to our preparing wines for Zenith Uno use. Thanks again for watching.